Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to do Chapter 7, Lesson 6, which is factoring AX squared plus BX plus C. Please have your journals open to page 232. For the first six problems, what we're going to need to do first is factor out the GCF, and then we're going to factor it just like what we did in Section 7.5. So I'll do a few problems with you. I'm going to start with number two. I need to find a number that multiplies out of all three parts. So I can factor out a four of all three. And so when I do that, what I'm going to have left is a squared plus 2a minus 35. Now I need to factor it like what we did in section 7.5. So the factors of a squared are a and a. Notice I'm ignoring this 4 out front right now. That will come in later as the answer, as part of the answer. Now I need to think about some multiples that multiply to negative 35. So it's multiplying to negative 35, which means one of the numbers has to be negative. So negative 7 and positive 5 uh, seem to work. Let's see if that works when we cross product. So a times 5 is 5a, and a times negative 7 is negative 7a. So now we need to double check, do these two numbers multiply, or sorry, add to the number in the middle? So negative 7 and positive 5, whoop, not quite. If we want it to be a positive 2 in the middle. It's negative 2 right now. So I'm just going to flip-flop my signs and make this a negative, positive 7 and make this a negative 5. So that would make this positive 7 and negative 5, and now it does work. So now we need to write our answer. Don't forget that there's a 4 still out front there, and now we're going to write our two answers that go inside the parentheses. One of the parentheses is straight across, so we have a plus 7. The other one is going to be a minus 5, and there we have our answer. Okay, let's take a look at number 5. I need to find a number that multiplies out of the three terms, and 5 comes out. So I'm going to take 5 out, and what's, what I'm left with is s squared plus 11s plus 10. Now I need to find out some multiples here. So we have the multiples of s squared, which is s times s, and multiples of 10 is 5 and 2, but I know that I need to have it add to 11. So I'm going to use 10 and 1 instead. Now we're going to uh, multiply across here. So we have s times 1 is 1s, s times 10 is 10s, and now I'm double checking that these two add up to what's in the middle, and they do. So my final answer here for number 5, we have to put the 5 out front. Don't forget that we multiplied that out first. And what goes in the first parenthesis is s plus 10, and the second one is s plus 1. And there we have our answer. I would like for you to please do the rest of these four problems on your own. So number 1, 3, 4, and 6. First, factor out the GCF and then see if you can finish factoring like we did in section 7.5. Okay, so please check your answers for 1, 3, 4, and 6. As a reminder from section 7.5 video, you can flip-flop these around. Like for example, on number one, I could write it as two and then parentheses C plus two and then C minus nine. So if you're, uh, parentheses are in a different order than mine, that's completely fine, as long as the actual parentheses is in the is correct. So those first six problems were a little easy. Uh, now we're going to get into some a little bit more difficult, because you notice that on number seven, there is no GCF that, that I can pull out. So that means I'm left with these larger numbers. So this is where it really, really helped for you to practice the the way that I was teaching how to do it before. I know that a lot of you probably thought, well, there's a way easier way to do that. And there was an easier way to do the previous lesson, but now um, that you've practiced that new way, this is gonna come in a lot easier. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what are some multiples of 12g squared. So I know that six times two equals 12. So I'm gonna try that, six g 
and 2g. Now I need to think of some multiples of positive 28, but it notice it adds to a negative. So that means that, let's see, 4 and 7. All right, so I know that they both have to be negative. And the reason why I know that is because it adds, it multiplies to a positive number, but it adds to a negative number. All right, so now let's check the crossing here. So 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. And then 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And so now we're going to see, do these two add up to negative 37? And they don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eraser, and I had negative 7 and negative 4, so I'm going to make this instead negative 4 on the top and negative 7 on the bottom. And so this needs to be erased as well, and it's not erasing, so I will just cross it out. So now we're going to cross product again. So we have 6 times negative 7, so that's going to be negative 42. Oh, I know that, that there's no way that that's going to add up because... Uh, this will be negative 8, and as you can see, there's that that's way, way too big. So I'm actually pretty confident that 6g and 2g are not my first choice there. So instead of 6 times 2 equals 12, let's try something different. Let's try uh, 4 and 3. So I'm going to try 4g and 3g. I'm still pretty confident about negative 4 and 7, negative 7. Uh, I'm not sure if that's in the right space, but let's go ahead and check it and see. So 4 times negative 7, that's going to be um, negative 28g. And then across this way, we have negative 12g. So that's going to be uh, 30. That'll be 40. Not quite. So let's go ahead and erase. Maybe they're in the wrong spot. So I'll put 7 on the top and 4 on the bottom. And we can try that instead. So I'm erasing over there as well. Okay, so 4 times 4, so it's negative 16. And then we have negative 21. Um, oh, yay, that actually does add up to the middle term. So this does indeed add to the middle term. So we found it. Awesome. So that means that my answer is going to be, remember, we go across to find our answer. So one of my parentheses is going to be 4g minus 7. My other parenthesis will be 3g minus 4. And there we have our answer. So as you can see, these questions are really a lot of guess and check, guess and check, guess and check. And sometimes it's, it's easy to find the answers, and sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, and you just need to persevere until you find it. It's like a puzzle. All right, I'm going to do a few more problems with you. Let's take a look at number eight. So we're going to figure out what are some multiples of six. So six, three times two equals six. So I'm going to go 3k and 2k to start with. And multiples of four is two and two. So I'm going to try negative two and negative two. The reason why I made them negative is because I see that they have to multiply to equal a positive number, which they do, and our, but our middle term is negative, so it has to add to a negative. So that means these both have to be negative. All right, let's cross multiply here. So we have three times negative two is negative six, and two times negative two is negative four, and that adds up to 10. So that's not quite right. I do know that if I just switch these, that wouldn't help me out too much. So I don't think that that's, these are the right ones at all. So I'm going to go ahead and erase my negative twos and try different numbers that multiply to four. So I know that four and one work. So I'm going to put a four here and a one here. Oh, but I need to remember to make them negative. So these will both be negative. Okay, so now let's cross multiply here. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3k. And then 2k times negative 4 is negative 8k. And let's see if those add up to the middle term. Oh, yay, they do. I, that one didn't take as long as number 7. So the numbers are a little smaller, so it was a little easier this time. All right, so that wasn't so bad. Um, so that means that our answer is going to go, remember we have to go straight across from each other to find our answer. So one of our answers is 3k minus 4, and the other one is 2k minus 1. And there we have it.
All right, let's take a look at number 10. So I'm going to do one more problem with you and then I'll let you try a few on your own. So on number 10, I need to think of some multiples of 12a squared. Well, let's see, 3 and 4 worked really well for number 7, so I think I'm going to use those instead of 6 and 2. So 3a and 4a. Now I need to think of multiples of negative 2, but I notice that they add to a positive number. So it means if I'm multiplying to a negative, one of the numbers needs to be negative. So I'm going to try negative 2 and 1. Those are really the only choices that I have. Uh, and now we're going to multiply across. So 3a times 1 is 3a, and 4a times negative 2 is negative 8a. So I see that it's really, really close. These add to a negative 5a, but I need it to add to a positive 5a. So I'm just going to flip my negatives a little bit here and make the 1 as a negative instead. So now when I multiply across, I have negative 3a here, and I have positive 8a here. And just to double check, 8 minus 3 does equal positive 5, so we have it there. So that means that I'm going to put my two parentheses down here. One of my parentheses is going to be 3a plus 2, and the other parentheses is going to be 4a minus 1. I would like for you to pause the video and go ahead and try the next three puzzles. Remember, I think about these like puzzles. So try them on your own. So do number 9, 11, and 12, please. Okay, go ahead and check your answers on those three problems, and if you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. So for the next six problems, you'll notice that they all start with a negative number. Any time you have a negative number, the first thing you want to do is pull it out because it's not doing you any good. It's going to be really hard to solve. So I always suggest just pulling out the negative. So we're just going to make everything. It's like we're dividing by negative 1. So then it's going to be positive 12b squared and then minus 5b, and then minus 2. You're just flipping the signs as you go through because we're pulling out that negative 1. So now the problem is just like the problems that we did earlier. We need to factor this. So I need to think of some multiples of 12b squared. I'm going to do 3b and 4b since that's been working well for me. Fortunately, this is there's only one thing that could multiply to 2, and that's 2 and 1. So let's go ahead and try negative 2 and positive 1 and see if that works. So let's cross multiply here. We have 3b. And then if we cross here, we have negative 8b. Oh, wow, I got it on the first try. Check it out. Negative 8 and positive 3 does equal negative 5. Awesome. So now my answer has that negative 1. Don't forget that we've got to put that in. That negative 1 comes from up here. Okay, so we've got to make sure that that's in the answer. And then uh, our first parenthesis, I'm just going to put it as 3b minus 2. Our next parenthesis is 4b plus 1. And there we have our answer. All right, let's take a look at number 14. I see that I have a negative there again, so I'm going to pull that negative out. And I'm left with positive 6x squared and then minus x and then minus 15 on the inside. All right, so now let's think of some multiples of 6x squared. So I'm going to do 3x and 2x, and then negative 15, I'm going to do um, 5 and 3. I notice that um, these two multiply to a negative, uh, but they have to add to a negative. So that means one of my numbers is negative. I'm going to go ahead and make this one negative. Now let's multiply across. So we have 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x, and 2 times 5 is positive 10x. Ooh, that's actually really close. These two add to a positive x, but I need it to be a negative x. So I'm going to go ahead and take that negative away and put it with the 5 instead. So I'm going to put my negative up here. So now when I cross multiply there, 3x times positive 3 is 9x, and 2x times negative 5 is negative 10. And now they do indeed add to that middle term of negative x. All right, so now we're ready to write our answer. We have, don't forget your negative 1 that we took from up here. And now we have our parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we go straight across 3x minus 5 
and then 2x plus 3. And there we have our answer. Let's take a look at number 15. Once again, I see a negative out in front, the negative 60. So I'm going to pull that negative out, and I'm left with positive 60g squared plus 11g, and then minus 1. Now I'm ready to factor. So 60 is a kind of a big number. Fortunately, I have a negative 1 here, which means that the the numbers that go down here, I only have one choice. It has to be negative 1 and positive 1. So now I need to think of some numbers that multiply to 60. So 15 and 4 work. Let's go ahead and try that. Also, 60 is 12. It has a 12 factor of 12. Let's try 15 and 4 first and see what happens. So 15g and 4g. All right, so now let's cross product here. So 15 times 1, so that's going to be 15g. And then this will be negative 4g. Excellent. Wow, I've been getting it again. So that's wonderful. Makes it easy. All right, it looked like it was going to be harder. Uh, so that's my answer there. So that means I'm ready to write my answer. I have a negative 1 out front. And then in the parentheses, I have a 15g minus 1 and a 4g plus 1. I would like for you to go ahead and try these puzzles, these next three, numbers 16, 17, 18. Don't forget to pull out the negatives first on all three, and then go ahead and see if you can finish factoring them. All right, please check your answers on those last three problems, and if you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. For the sake of this video, we're going to skip numbers 19 and 20, although uh, we might be doing them during class. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.